Hey gang, for those of you who enjoy QF, a podcast about Howard Stern, and would like to donate to us just via PayPal, you can using the email address johnnythegreek21 at gmail.com. You can check the link in the description for the spelling, and it's also here on the graphic. And if you'd like to do more in terms of uh, donations or subscriptions, you can use our Patreon account and subscribe via the black kluge level and you can receive our weekly content that we're putting only on patreon it's exclusive for that platform and um anything over five dollars is just gravy guys we love you thank you so much i have zero um i have zero inbox do you know that we do another contract here. Let's do a three-hour show. What? We should be done right now. Well, you're having this negotiation with me. That's the only problem. Well, who am I supposed to negotiate with? <laughs> Fred? And uh, the one thing I don't respond well to is humiliation. I don't respond well to it at all. You know, I don't want to be told what a shithead I am. I don't want to be, you know, I, this, those days are over. I've, I've suffered enough in this business. I don't need to, to find out what a shithead I am. Are you ready for this? You cut your hair, man. What do yeah. you do? What's I, going on? I'm getting old. So I what? You know, you, I can't keep it like yours. You know, I'm, I'm old too. So what? Yeah, but you're ugly. Uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Jesus. What are you saying? I need well, the you, hair? You need it. No, well, I need you need it. Well, you know, it's just <laughs> interesting when people have their kids on the air. Yeah, but I'm just saying, if a kid was a fuck up, you just keep them quiet. I put my kids on the air more, but they they want no part of it. When you're trying to just have a friendly conversation. When he's irritable, the things you do every day become the wrong thing to do. That's true. He doesn't listen. That's right. But the most irritating thing of all is that we used to be good friends, and we just aren't anymore. I still love him, but he says everybody's expendable, and I just have to live with that. I was going to look for a Nikki Hilton. But you see, those good-looking rich rich, uh, girls, they don't go for a guy like me because they don't need my money. And Rickles tells me this story. So Beth says to Don Rickles, gee, I wonder what they say about me. (laughs) Don Rickles goes, you. (laughs) No one cares about you. (laughs) You don't even know that important. (laughs) No one says anything about you. No one. No one talks about you. I don't even know you. You're not that big. (laughs) I do have to ask, do you think there's a physical match between him and Beth? Do you? <laughs> yes, they're both tall and have tall fingers. <laughs> yeah, they look right together. <laughs> I don't know, they look more right together now. It was just on the regular show. <laughs> it just occurred to me that I listened to them. Like, who get, like, I, uh, it dawned on me like two days ago. Who's a, like, my hair's gonna get crazy because. Yeah. Of, I don't have, like, a, I'm not going to get a haircut. And then Beth goes, I'll cut your hair. But you can't cut my hair because my my hair is curly. It's, a, you, you, it's you, hard to cut your hair. Welcome, folks, to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, Fillmore, a.k.a. Jim Fix, and as a.k.a. that fucking boring, annoying asshole, according to Reddit. <laughs> Fuck you all. <laughs> um, we're going to... we're gonna. Oh, uh, you're worried about what they say about you on Reddit? Jesus, I'm, like, <laughs> universally panned. And Sam coming in hot. <laughs> How are you doing, Sam? Uh, hi, guys. <laughs> The uh, every now and then I do go on Reddit just to see what the flavor of the month is and whatever they're going through and whatever bullshit. And, and since Norm, since Norm's passing, a lot, a lot of heavy Norm stuff, of course, which is understandable. But uh, yeah, I occasionally browse it. I haven't been on there in a while, but I did see the uh, the Norm, the one Norm headline where they were talking about Stern faking cancer to sell books, and this oh. guy didn't even mention having an illness. And I thought oh, yeah. that was that one socked me right in the face. I was like, "Wow, that's so true." <laughs> that might be the most incisive Reddit comment I think I've read in ten years. Because most of the times, it's never that short, sweet, and witty, and uh, and actually, uh, yeah. You know, let me actually dead on. pull. A- I want to pull the exact comment. It'll take me one second because I took a screenshot of it. I was so impressed that I had to save it for all time. 
Yeah, and um, I'll, I'll put I'll post a screen cap for you guys so you know we're not full of shit, and we'll I give that like, person credit if it's if it's posted. I was like, wow, I I rarely am impressed by Reddit. Um, Stern capitalized on a quote cancer scare to shill a book. Norm privately battled leukemia for a decade. Right. So what do you, how do you Boom. think that made how do you think no, that made Norm feel knowing that he had what he knowing what he had and to I, hear this asshole, you know, <laughs> shilling uh, a shit book of transcripts. And I'll even uh, give the poster credit. Uh, the poster is who's high pitch. OK, there might be a few with that name, but either way. Well, you you were dead on, dude, whoever it was or, or Mrs. Whoever it was that posted that. And um, we we just, you know, we just finished our uh, we're in between episodes with this recording. By now, you will have heard the Norm tribute video we did. It's also on Podbean and all, you know, listen notes and Stitcher and all kinds of apps, guys. But Podbean's our main gig. And um, the, the Richie Wilson interview is going to be this Sunday. And that's a shorty. It's not as long as the last one, but it's still pretty good. Yeah. Uh, he was a little lit for it, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's still good. Yeah, he was, he was, he did, a, he had done a joint. I don't, I think he admits it at the end or the beginning, but at some point I think he does say it. And I think I left it in, but um, either way, he was good. He's still able to answer some stuff for us. He wasn't completely, uh, dude, pass the brownies. He wasn't, he wasn't asked napkin Ed, is all I can say. He's way he was way better than I would have been. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's so anyway, sure. this 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 one is going to be uh straddling Patreon and uh Sunday and by that I mean this this particular episode is about of course Ralph stealing money and it was one of those things where it came out at the end of the first year contr- uh, first year of Sirius at t- uh 120506 uh unless that's May 12th. <laughs> I don't know. I know it's I know it's the uh, 2006. That's for sure. And at any rate, it um, it was it came out in the conversation and we'll deal with it. But Carrie and I have already pre-recorded the the r- wrap up show of the same day. So that's going to go on Patreon. And that I wanted his like legal expertise as a case as, you know, like a lawyer going, what, how, how soon into the Ralph conversation would he be indicted? <laughs> that's so funny. I th- when I was, <laughs> we had to do like when I was in paralegal, we had to do um, briefs or memos, like part of our stuff where cases of stealing and theft, like how would you go about this or what would your arguments be? And I let, and I liked going into theft or stealing ones, like how would you tackle this so that uh-huh. I, I can't wait to listen to that. Okay, so it's a long clip, guys, and we're going to try to get through power through some chunks of it, like with not much commentary, just to get a little further into the thing. So here we go. Guy named Marshall Silver. Oh, love him. Yeah, he's great. He's really good. He's going to hypnotize a few people, see if we can't get some hijinks going. And uh, for anyone who thinks it's not real, it's 100 percent real. Hey, Artie, I got to hypnotize you. <laughs> I'm not going to hypnotize. Uh, Give it a try. No. Why see if you're not? hypnotizable. Dude. No, no, no. Artie is. You know what? He is not a, a fun guy. You're right. What happened to you? What I'm not I don't I never wanted to ever want I've never said I wanted to get hypnotized. Are you back on uh, heroin? That's why you're afraid yeah, it'll come we'll out. Yeah, we'll get it. Out. No. Oh fuck's sake. Oh, I don't want to be your I don't want to be your patsy. What are you on drugs? Oh, Jesus. Imagine wanna, imagine that. It's like I don't want to play along. I do everything else. I I'm sick of being played. Well, this, and, I, and I think already at that point or one point said, why don't you get hypnotized? Because I could run the show. And he goes, ah, oh, please. <laughs> or he was the best. <laughs> I love that yeah. derision. The, the exact same derision where he goes, bro, the fucking gayest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, you can run the show when you can't find a piece of paper. You literally have a, a nuclear meltdown. Yeah. And Where's that, that piece of paper? The whole people. show, for, the whole show goes down. Carrie, <laughs> where's that piece of paper? One moment, please. Oh, you, well, you totally fucked me yesterday. You totally mentioned the city, by the way. Oh, did I? Okay. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Well, you die. Yeah, well, I didn't know. Did I didn't me first. Why didn't city? you just say to me that's not true? You know what? Even my driver said, "Why didn't you say it was just a friend?" Yeah, you're the fucking nut. 
Yeah. You totally fucked me. You know, you're another scum. How do I fuck you? <laughs> I, I, I mentioned. I, I said, now you, I can, suppose someone took chess out of your life. Now I, <laughs> chess, please. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not denigrating chess, by the way, guys. Loads of people know how to play chess and enjoy it. It's not a it's just Howard playing chess somehow makes the sort of the game meter ping red a little more with chess. Listen, it's not the Queen's Gambit going on in the Stern household. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at you look at the right pictures. I can't fucking play my chess. Oh, oh, please. You can take it out of my life if you do me a favor. <laughs> like there are 10 million ways to gamble. You'll be fine. This was a fun way to gamble. <laughs> You'll find I said another to somebody yesterday, Artie loves the whole romance of, of giving money or getting money from a guy who might break his legs if he doesn't pay. Because that guy wrote me again. And he claims, he still thinks you're using because he says, I nah, forget, I'm not going to get into it. Yeah, because you'll ruin uh, another thing. I mean, it's just, why do you even have to say that? Like, some schmo wrote me. Uh, that you're using, but uh, I'm going to be the good guy and not bring it up, even though I just brought it up. That's the M.O. That's the stern M.O. Yeah, I don't want to ruin anything. <laughs> I don't want you getting ruined. That's a little nudge douchebag. Oh. Oh. Artie's going to do what Artie wants to do. Yeah, you see, I told yeah, Artie wants to gamble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, I told Jason to print this out. You didn't get the note? What? On the on the, on the the email I got from this guy again. You sent it to Artie? No, I sent it to Jason oh. to print out. Hmm. All right. Okay, so he wasn't going to bring it up, but he sent it to Jason to print out. And now he's saying, oh, uh, I'm not going to bring it up, but uh, Jason, print it out. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't make it part of the wallpaper. <laughs> how, how many things do you print out that you don't want to bring up? I could, I could tell you zero. I, I called in. I, I did an editorial at the New York Times, but I didn't want it out there. Uh, let's continue, guys. We're going to try to get a power to this. The initial part is not really about the stealing, obviously. So your friend called you. He's pissed. Well, you know, yeah, he's got yeah. The, the, the city that he mentioned is is uh, the guy sort of you know. <laughs> well, why didn't you just say it was a friend of yours? You got in the car and you weren't you weren't b betting. I, I mean, if you if you want to keep it secret, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in your what life. You, what is Howard have um, truth serum? Yeah, I'm not. What am I? I'm naive about this stuff. <laughs> Here's what the guy says. No, forget it. Let me see what you're gonna read. All right, yeah. <laughs> you read it. Okay. Oh, because Howard loves it so much when anything in anybody in his world gets brought up. You can't even mention anything that he does. Not where his mm -hmm. therapist is, not who he's going to see, not about his, ex, his, his ex secret wedding or whatever the hell the fuck that was. But you can't bring he went and got a secret realtor when he was going looking for houses or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm that, saying? So, yeah. That was in the so, uh, Colford part one, guys. Just for just a quick plug. So he's acting like, listen, I don't, I don't know what you're doing with your secretive stuff. You know, I don't know what can and can't be mentioned. Look at what you do. You wouldn't like it either. Well, the, uh, and I wonder how much of that is about just control, like controlling information. Because when he did that, Larry King, Deborah and I were talking about this on the one of the Patreon episodes when uh, the Kabbalah play was out and then he went on Larry King, also plugging Sirius at 2006. <laughs> and he had to talk. He was forced to talk about that play. Did you get the sense like it was just as bad as when he did the oh, uh, uh, the New York Post uh, wrote an article about uh, uh, there was an interview they did with uh, with Emily and she was a great kid. You know, didn't get the same sense of nervousness because he's talking about his real life. He needed um, some sort of training, media training, so badly. And I don't know why he thought he could pull it off again. No. If you hear that fucking interview, it's uh, she's uh, and I'm guilty of that, too, guys. I apologize. But he really was stumple, stumple stutter mouth, you know, and, and fumpering through a fucking sentence, uh, every his paragraphs talking to Larry King. And it explained it so poorly that at the end, you're thinking there's way more to this than he was willing to say. 
Well, somebody in his life, like Ralph or Robin or somebody should have pulled him aside and said, listen, you came off really bad explaining this the first time. If you're going to have to go on Larry King on national television to explain this again, you better get a professional to give you how exactly you're going to explain this so it doesn't create more issues. Right. He needed more structure. Uh, let's continue. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention anything. Oh, specific. my goodness. You read it. <laughs> no, he is a jerk off. <laughs> what did you say? Tell us why. I didn't mention the city. I said what city it bordered. It's five possible towns. And I will eat. say it to his face, you jerk off. What? And by the way, I didn't mention the city. I said what city it bordered. It's five possible cities. That's right. He didn't say the exact city. Right. Dude, dude, first of all, dude, go where you go where I saw you this afternoon and you Hold on, guys. You're going to run it through. We'll see who says it to whose face. Oh, is he you threatening you? Piece of shit. What is he saying in the letter? Oh, it's the second. I'm not a punk. If he's going to say, say it, say it to my face. I'll say it to your face this afternoon. You know what? You don't need to fight anyone. <laughs> just calm down. No, just go there, asswipe. <laughs> but what uh, is it saying in the letter? What is he saying oh, that's getting right. you so upset? No, he just said say it to my face. No, what else did he say? He's fucking with my life. What else did he say? Nothing. I'm not, uh, what? You don't want to read that? <laughs> what does it say? Huh? Oh, I hate Howard. He loves this so much. Oh God! Oh God! Yeah, he's he's just, anytime he could tweak any single one of them and get the reaction he wants, which is mostly anger. But then when it gets to throwing shit at Teddy or throwing shit at Sal, it's like I don't know what was going on. Yeah, how about we just print out all the emails that are pure piss and vinegar about how the status of the show is today, and let's just have Howard read them. You know, like, how about we do that? You, 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 you know, I'm laughing about it, but it was some, uh, it was some recently, um, I think Insta and the Jimmy Kimmel appearance, at least that one post on Insta, someone texted me and said, they're not accepting, uh, comments for this Instagram thing right now. And I'm thinking that's the same thing they're doing with Twitter. They, unless you're a friend of the show, meaning they're friends with you on Twitter, you can't actually tweet the Stern show at all. They've turned off comments. Why? Who would do that except people who are completely afraid that the negative and they are aware that the negativity is so overwhelming it will overwhelm every single bit of positive bullshit they can try to spin. Yeah, Hilaria Baldwin did the same thing with her Instagram. <laughs> did she really? Yep, she only allows um, friends of the court to comment on her Instagram. So it oh, it wasn't just a one time thing. It was like she said it permanently. That so yeah, like that oh wow. So it looks like everybody loves her, but it's only like eleven comments from you know paid bots. <laughs> I might have to make a you know Fillmore Baldwin account just to get on her. <laughs> See, she won't. She, you I'm a can't. cousin. <laughs> <laughs> from Massapequa. <laughs> but you're right. It's just like if you're really interested in people's what are you afraid of if you cuz this is exactly what, how he would react. So h why do you, are you doing this to someone? Well, yeah. And the other thing is, well, I mean, the truth is no one wants negative feedback, but if the reality is you have nobody feeding that to you because you're afraid of, you know, having to face the fact that people don't like you, uh that's just burying your head in the sand. I mean, I understand not liking criticism. Nobody likes criticism, but to be so deluded and think you're actually putting on a good show when you know you're not. And the fact that, you know, like, does he even know that the Twitter's turned off for his show? I wonder about oh, that. I'm, I'm sure he's probably the one who directed that. <laughs> like, I so? can't listen. Yeah. Like I can't read another bad comment. Turn this I all think, off. I think Make Marcy, this go away. I think Marcy independently said, we got to keep him. We got to keep the golden Pelican happy. Or do you think that it was Marcy saying, we have to get this off because celebrities are going to look at this and say, we can't, we can't go on this show. Nobody likes this show. Right. I think it was just instigated by, it was simply a, a Marcy edict after a result of, oh my God, how, so what was the re, you know, what was the reaction on Twitter? And <laughs> they showed a printout of how many comments were negative. And then after that, he might've done a rant and didn't command anybody to do anything, but she independently said, okay, fuck it. From now on, only friends with the show posting on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's how it went down. Because, again, he is a bit of a pussy. I can't imagine him going, turn off all the negativity on Twitter. Does he even know it? He'd say, you know, install a SIM card in Twitter and, you know, make it happen. <laughs> Jeff <laughs> Schick, where are you? Exactly. Without a life, ah! douchebag. Look at you. Let me get a few things straight here. 
I what heard Howard read my email yesterday, so I jizzed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Howard read my email, guys. Yeah, what else is he Bring said? some of your faggot friends, though. Oh, 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 oh. What is it, Ralph? Yeah. Artie, I love you, but why are you blaming fucking Howard for you uh, ratting out your bookie? You're the one who said you were like... Okay, guys, let's uh, run this one through. This is, you know, the the, the, the sensei of all wisdom, Ralph. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, Ralph. See, remember the last time we did a podcast, I said, uh, about Robin's dinner. Mm -hmm. And Ralph wasn't there, and that aggravated Howard because he can't get his true opinions out if Ralph isn't there. Mm -hmm. So what Howard really wants to say, he uses Ralph to say mm -hmm. it. Yeah, so, he's the mouthpiece. So Ralph is calling in, and he is saying what Howard wants to say. So Howard can be good cop, bad cop, but he's really, this is what Howard wants to say. Right. Now, Wiggy's hiding behind a computer screen, but he is hiding in, literally behind computers in terms of the people that are calling in, and he's directing people who are going to say something negative towards Artie, and in this case, Ralph, you're right. You're absolutely right. Like with a bookie, he could have just said, like, oh, yeah, Fred said hi, and I uh, said hi, and he left. Yeah, I was picking him up. We were going to go to a game or something. Yeah. We met, well, that's where we meet. Like a hundred things you could have said. Right. You uh, but he blames me. It. I'm, now not, you're I'm not listening people. to Ralph. I'm reading this. You're always blaming other people for your problems. And Ralph should know. <laughs> and you know what, Artie? You, you, you never have a good bet. I'll take your action. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah, right. I've, I've I've bet with you before. You owed me a hundred dollars for two years. <laughs> <laughs> I love when Artie gets pushed. It's funny. He said this on the air, and he said it multiple times in interviews. You push him too far, all of a sudden he's going to hit you with a fucking neutron bomb. And when he starts getting at it, like he he wasn't bullshitting. He could get he could get to anybody if given enough provocation. Very true, and it's also risky to keep certain people like Artie and now Ronnie to have Ralph be the guy to do the egging on and pushing because if you really want to tweak these people who oh, know yeah. so much about Ralph and Howard oh, yes. in that situation, oh, yeah. right. well, you better be you better be fucking worried what might come out because now you're going to see what's going to come out from Artie and now in this present tense what's going to come out with ronnie because howard started getting nervous and had to shove him off the phone because he was oh, like yes. oh fuck oh fuck oh fuck and if ronnie wants there's ways to get that information out there he just has to tell the right couple people and they tell nt or they tell you know fucking tmz or whoever and all of a sudden it's out there something's out there that, that he doesn't want. will Yes, more more so now. And I'm not saying it's coming from Ronnie or that it will come from Ronnie. I'm simply saying if the the fact that the summit video part 1 actually made it out, not that not that you know, this the fact that it got, somehow got its way out of the compound, the fucking <laughs> the Waco, you know, Koresh compound um is indicative enough the fact that people want him to fall on his ass. They want him to taste some shit. So if he was such a great boss that he claims he is sometimes and sometimes he says, he, I am an asshole and that's what I would be if I were Ellen, that kind of shit, uh, there would be no one wanting to do that. That he'd be taking care of people enough so that they wouldn't feel, I'm going to drop this. I'm going to drop this fucking bomb and I want to see all the fallout. I'm going to kick up my feet and have popcorn and beer watching it. Yeah, and I don't think that Howard thinks far ahead enough that he he doesn't think long term strategy. So he has Ralph tweak people and he does these little pushes like this. And he he's he thinks I'm going to get Ronnie today. I'm and he pushes him a little too far about this retirement thing. And I think he's, you know, keeps doing it, keeps doing it. I think it might end up where it's like you go one you go one hit too far and you're not thinking about it, it might go real left for him oh, and yes. you're getting the wrong person to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You, you might have to use someone else. You might have to use like Kaplan or somebody else, but then even Kaplan is not respected by RD or whoever. So yeah, you're right. He has to tread very carefully. And I'm telling you, if certain people want that fucking information to get out, they can make it in such a way that nobody, they can make it an anonymous Reddit poster. They can call him, you know, they can call the truth about Stern and he's not going to be able to find it. And they can pay people to make this bullshit account, burner account, and he won't, there won't be a number he can get to, private investigator, nothing. Yeah. He'd have to, he'd have to pretty much hire a hacker to find who these people are and he still wouldn't be able to find them. And he's too cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking pussy. You have to break his yeah. leg. If Artie's waiting for you to do yeah, bad, yeah, yeah. keep betting on the fucking loser giants. Good yeah. job. Move into Sam's house and get the fuck out of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get beat. We'll get Beetlejuice to pick out yeah, our shooter. <laughs> We're more of those fucking. <laughs> Beetlejuice will pick out Howard Church. You can look at Sam and blow him. Are you wearing one of those shirts you wore last week where your fucking belly hangs out the Uh, bottom? That's not necessary. That's really nice. Yeah, Ralph. It's not. Yeah, everybody wants to see that. You ugly freak. Yeah, you... I love this. I love this fucking exchange. And that already, that little aside, you can can blow Sam Simon. That, to me, is like the, the first reason like that and the explanations about why ralph is going up to sam simon uh that was all i needed to to know to to say that i think you know sam simon's a cock smoker well i think obviously we all thought that but the way Artie just threw it out there obviously yep. he knows too yes. and ralph started this with this venomous like why is he being so aggressive? Like, oh, your shitty bets and go have fun with your fucking giants. Like, it's the t- listen, it's the to, tone. listen to this tone right off yeah. out the gate. Artie has every right to be insulting right back to him. What's what's the expression? Don't bring a knife to a gunfight. And that's exactly what Ruff's doing. And Artie, if he wants, yeah, he could just level him and Howard. And I think that's what later on. You're right. Howard gets a little nervous that he could out something about him. And anytime Ralph gets super upset and argues, I notice he gets bitchy gay tone. Bitchy, yes, bitchy, <laughs> big gutter gay. <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my God, you sound bitchy gay, like super bitchy gay tone guy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> the Hamptons are burning. Fucking fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> How many donuts are you eating? Bro? How many donuts are you eating, bro? <laughs> right, thank you, Ralph. Thanks for, you know. Yeah, exactly. Right. Go thank fuck you. your Star Trek figures in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Go fuck your bookie in the ass. The fucking loser bookie. Hey. Don't call my bookie a loser now, oh, Ralph. I'll like tell him where you like, live. Yeah, like he's got any accent. <laughs> like he's, 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 meeting you at, he's meeting you at a diner for five hundred dollars. Yeah, he's real top of the line. Uh, top of I the think, line. Um, the um, this is the thing. Uh, there was some conjecture that oh, you know, this person was uh, a drug mule or whatever, like basically handing him drugs. I think it's very likely the person. He was a bookie and he had some drugs, whatever, because already was, you know, he admitted later on he's still doing it. So it makes perfect sense why he'd want that uh, the identity um, uh, covered and concealed. But I don't know. It would be like a massage therapist also being a jerk off specialist. It goes (laughs) hand in hand. (laughs) Ralph knows about that. I'm sorry. He's not like your bookie. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you still want to get paid. <laughs> exactly. All right. Thank you, Ralph. Fat fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. I you guys were friends. Oh, yeah, I thought he called I love Artie. Artie. I love Ralph, too. <laughs> so did the guy have more information in this new email? No, it's just Oh, old. thanks, Robin. <laughs> I, I hate I, that voice she uses. Yeah, I hate did that. Did he have any you new information? You know what? The guy loves, Tim, read the theory, though. The guy loves that he had his name mentioned. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't mention his name. What, what, what is, uh, What's the theory? Read the theory. Okay, so here we go with the uh, the note that was handed to Artie. All right. You don't go see your bookie on a Friday. Right. That's dumb. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You can pay the guy. It depends on your schedule. You can pay the guy whenever. The guy's point was, why is Artie meeting the guy on a Friday? You don't pay your book on him. Why are you, why are you stalking me, asswipe? <laughs> well, why is Artie paying his bookie on a Friday? <laughs> I decided to get to my computer and shoot you an email. He cares about you. Can I get a tour of the studio? <laughs> I wait. I just, I don't understand. So he paid his bookie on a Friday. So he's settling up. Yeah. I, what, what difference like he does lost, it make? He lost the bet, so he's got to pay up. So what? Like sometimes you got to track people down. I know, 
you know, when people owe Rick money, sometimes he's got to track them down. And it's like, you got to pay when you pay. And sometimes people square up later. Sometimes they square up earlier. I don't get it. Who cares? Artie will give it to you. Oh, Artie will give you a tour. <laughs> I'll give you a tour of your fucking asshole with your face. <laughs> Friday is Shav- Shabbos. <laughs> yeah, Why you don't pay your be- bookie on Shabbos. <laughs> Sounds like someone's using. What? Oh, yes. yeah, Ralph, you're using Howard. <laughs> <laughs> that is the <laughs> sound of using <laughs> for 20 years, Dick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I went here to kick your habit. Yeah. <laughs> it's just brilliant. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the, keep the window going. was right open. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> never. <laughs> All right, Ralph. Don't try a battle of wits, Ralph. You're unarmed. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was like in fucking movies like ten years ago. Good line. Huh? More of your fucking hackneyed lines he stole from somebody. <laughs> Jackie fucking Martling. Jackie Martling. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ralph. Jackie was skinnier. Fuck At least boy. I steal jokes. I don't steal a hundred dollars from my friends in a poker game. <laughs> 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 Oh yeah, remember that? Oh, what a complete scumbag! Yeah. What's the first thing? What's What's the first thing Howard said? Oh, remember that? that? <gasps> yep. Oh, remember that? Oh, what a complete scumbag! Right. So there's there's Howard saying like like knowingly saying it knowingly. This did happen definitively. It was it was a real thing that happened. And he's and he's he doesn't. You know, and all of a sudden, uh, I was there. I, I don't know. I didn't see, you know, I didn't know what, what happened. I was doodling. You know, that's pretty much the, it changes from this to five minutes later, 10 minutes later. It's amazing. And he says, oh, yeah, remember that immediately. It's not like a, uh, it's a reflex. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I remember that. No, it's reflexively. Yeah. He didn't even, he didn't even take a breath. It just came out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No stuttering, nothing. He stole a hundred dollars. Oh, a couple times. Make no rap. He steals money. What happened that time? I never wanted to bring it up. But go ahead. I never uh, wanted uh, to bring it up. That's what he said. Uh, wow. <laughs> so you know this about this guy who's your confidant that he's a fucking thief. And what does that say about you? You basically have Aladdin, like a pickpocketer. (laughs) (laughs) Oliver Twist. (laughs) One jump ahead of the bread line. (laughs) Okay. We were on the jet flying out to Vegas, and we're all playing poker, and me and Ross were uh, sitting there, we're divvying up the money, and Ralph just takes $100 and puts it in his pocket out of the pot. What? And me and Ross were like, did you see that? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> we confronted him, and he just was like, no, you guys. Of course, we were the wrong for confronting him, and he oh. finally he never admitted it either. He put the 100 back and said, okay, I'll take my own 100 and put it back to, to convince you guys I didn't do it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, he's not there. I must have uh, have you ever been in a, this type of situation? I mean, obviously, you're not on a plane going to Vegas, whatever bullshit, and having a poker game and people stealing from a pot. Um, but have you ever had the people like with a bill, like a, a restaurant bill, try to fucking chisel their way out of it? No, but I have. I have not the, not money, but I have had like. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of like. Um. I'm trying to think if I've had something what? like where uh, if I've confronted somebody knowing they've done something. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, at uh, work, okay. I know somebody was like we have stuff at, in our fridge, and I know somebody was taking my hot sauce at work because it was okay. like constantly being emptied, and yeah. I know I wasn't using it. Right. So. I caught somebody putting my hot sauce back and I said, hey, have you been using my hot sauce? And they're like, oh, no, I was just moving it because it wasn't fitting in the fridge right. And I was like, with the um, cap off. <laughs> and I was like, but it's gone. Yeah. But OK. But it, it's like one of those things where it's like, why are you lying about this? <laughs> like, well, did I, the per- I, was it was it for real? Like, did they fess up? In no, the end? that was it was just like. But I'll, no, and then they said, oh, I'll buy you a new one, though. But why would you buy me a new one if you didn't yes. take it? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, like, yeah, that's busted. 
Yeah. Plastic. It was just the weirdest thing. I just, I, I'm going to reuse this, but Deborah and I, like we were talking in another episode and uh, it's like an old Richard Pryor line where he goes, uh, and he goes, uh, I, I, I fucked around on my old lady. I, I, had to, I told her, I think I got the guilties. I thought she knew. She said, have you seen Ethel? I did it. Did what? <laughs> I fucked Ethel. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have you don't have like you're you you you're fold you may fold under questioning henry henry <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm yeah. Have a response to that ross won't ross won't admit it either because like, he just took it yeah Artie and ross uh, said that they saw that i said yeah, that's impossible you would never do that but they they uh they swear they convinced me otherwise oh. no they didn't they- they convinced me otherwise, and he laughed about it a little bit, but it didn't sound like a joke. They didn't convince him. You saw it, too. You said, oh, yeah, I yeah. remember that because you, you that? saw it, too. Yeah. So the tone changes drastically once it starts getting heated. Just wait, guys. Well, you know, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> what? Have you seen other things? Oh, this is whatever. <laughs> what did you see? Nothing. Nothing. This is, uh, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> I didn't mean to hang up on him. It was, getting, back on. Hold on a second, right. it was getting interesting. Oh, there. Uh, hey. What, what, Artie, did you just fucking make up a story? Yeah. No, actually, I remember it. But I remember the guys came. You know what, Ralph? Room. I made it up. I'm sorry. No, I, 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 seriously, I have no recollection of that. I, I don't steal money. Right. I, I have no recollection. I don't steal money. Um, like, all he has to do is say, I don't remember. All he has to do is say, uh, keep that line up. Now, no one's going to believe it anyway, but be consistent. And this is the one thing Carrie and I discussed, and you guys will hear it later. When the story keeps changing, when the person starts giving you non, um, when, the, when, the, when the witness starts giving you non-relevant information to try to distract you, it's like sleight of hand. Like, look at this. Look at the bouncing ball. Uh, watch, watch this. Watch the Hold spark on. gun from my hand. Go ahead. I gotta write, I'm going to write this down. So... I, what was it? I, yeah, uh, I don't, don't remember. I don't, I don't remember. Money. I don't steal money. Okay. okay. So we, we got our, our sats uh, QF stenographer in the house. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Ready? Keep going. Uh, you're right. I, I made it up. No, it was wrong for me to no, bring it up. Artie, you know, don't. It was wrong for me to bring it up. Oh, Artie, don't do that fucking Mr. Nice Guy shit where you fucking drop a bomb and you're, oh, no, no, no. It's okay. All right. Okay, then I guess I miss. I, I guess I didn't remember right. What is that? I mean, if Ross wants to come, in, if Ross wants to confirm it, if if you give Ross permission to talk about it, I bet I oh, can yeah, confirm. I like I trust fucking Ross. He's another fucking. He's a- okay, and in the middle of that, you couldn't hear him because already was way louder. But he said, "I didn't steal any money." Well, and like I trust fucking Ross. What is right. well? What are they? Say? Why? Why are we throwing Ross's um, what's the character? Word? Uh, yeah, why? Why are we ass- ass- assailing his character, or why are we um, uh, accusing him of being untrustworthy? Is it, what's the reason for that? So all of a sudden, we need to assassinate Ross's character. So what do you? So you, he's already Ralph is already assuming he's going to say he did it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't be saying you don't trust Ross. Why wouldn't? You, yeah. Why wouldn't you say? Yeah, bring him on. Yeah, tell him what was. He, what does he have to say? You're right. If you didn't yeah. do it, so he's automatically saying that guilty fuck. I don't. I don't trust that guy. <laughs> what it is is he's taking Howard's tack of what he used to do, like uh, basically, um, you know, a, a t- if you uh, a, the best defense is a strong offense. So once you start berating a guy and telling him he works for a shitty paper, all of a sudden that gossip columnist is a piece of shit, and no one believes him, and you know he's he's only working there because he couldn't work here. It, it's all designed to keep you from the prize. It's to keep your mind off of the actual article that busts the person. Yeah, this is basically like when Howard couldn't get Mr. Chestnut off the stage fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know what great I call, mean? Great callback. What was that? What was the, which one? Was the, which, which episode was that? Colford? We did that one in. Yeah, that was for yeah. Colford okay. when we were doing it with Ben. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's not here. Don't give him shit. Give me shit if you want. Well, it was probably a stupid thing to bring up on the air. I'm sorry. What happened? There was a pot to be divvied at the end, and then we were 100. It shy. could have been a misunderstanding. The Did you see truth. Ralph? And I, I apologize to Ralph for bringing that and up. Backpedal was... now. I heard both you guys talk about this. And they uh, said well, it, Ralph? I, did, I never saw it. Ross and Artie. Oh. Well, 
it, first of all, it's not it's not a cool thing to bring up on the air if you don't have all the facts. So, okay, now this is Bowie stoking the fire because he fucking hates Ralph more than anybody, and we they have a history of getting into it. Now they all hate Ralph, but he's the boss's girlfriend. And now Howard's saying he remembers it, he saw it, and now he's saying I heard it, I heard about this. Like yep. so, Howard has just now flip flopped. I don't know more than mask mandates. I'm I'm not even sure what's going on. <laughs> okay, could have been a misunderstanding. Yeah, well, you say that, and then you go, oh, it's a misunderstanding. I'm saying it, Ralph, and I'm sorry I brought it up. Yeah. I am. I really am. Uh, you drive drunk. You've been arrested. Oh, sorry, it's a misunderstanding. Wait, no, it's not. You know, what? it's bullshit, man. Are you, are you trying to make sense of that as well? Because I was listening to it going, I just got dumber. I just dropped IQ points listening to that. Is this like a character assassination, or is he trying to make a He's, possible... He was giving, he was giving a for instance. Let's say hypothetically you were <laughs> Ralph is not oh. exactly F. Lee Bailey. <laughs> oh, okay. He's F. Lee Gailey. Oh, God. Uh, he, he, he'd be like O.J.'s <laughs> second lawyer during that stealing well, the, thing. Where he made the, the civil thing. trial? <laughs> yeah, where he made that so, that war speech. On, <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my Lord. That, that went on forever, and I was like, oh, boy. He definitely hired the wrong lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is what happens when you don't get Johnny Cochran. Yeah. It didn't happen then. Yeah. Okay. What Tw happened? It didn't that, happen that, 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 twice that, 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 that week. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds real. Yeah. Like I'm stealing money on that fucking plane while you're fucking stuffing food in your face. How would you even see in anything? There's so much fucking food in your face. Okay. So oh. yeah, go ahead. Okay. You can write this down. <laughs> so now we have the place. We have the plane. So he just now gave away the scene. So right. nobody mentioned a plane until now. Nobody mm -hmm. mentioned a place until now. So we got the plane and nobody mentioned what they were doing. So I, now I, Ralph I, is putting himself in a position. Artie never said he was sitting down eating. Ralph just did. So now he knows what Artie was doing when he stole the money because he was looking at Artie when he was stealing. Well, I mean, ultimately, if you don't remember, then you shouldn't remember any detail, including what Artie was doing. Like, you shouldn't remember him eating. Why is this coming up suddenly? Yep. I think Artie did mention they were on the plane, but the eating part is where Ralph goes wrong and clearly go like, how could you? You were stuffing your face. Well, Jesus, that's like saying, wow, look at that. You know, the alligator was swimming in the water. That's kind of what they do. <laughs> you know, Artie eating was kind of a staple on the show. So... Uh, yeah, anybody could say that and, and, and know that that was probably happening. But either and way, how can you see anything? So Ralph was checking out what everybody was doing to make sure nobody would see him taking yeah, the money. That's sure. the point. You're canvassing right. the area. Yeah, he was casing it. He was casing the joint, basically looking who's going to notice if I fucking take this. Probably looking. He probably spray painted any CCTV cameras. Uh, let's keep going, guys. It gets better. Right. All oh, right, boy. Dude. Oh, boy. All right. Yeah. Listen, I'm sorry. Boy, Bubba's wedding's going to be comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I love Artie. I do. Don't worry about it. It's, it's, it was a dumb thing. You can steal your money Arnie anytime. It's a bad <laughs> argument. Arnie. It's a dumb thing to bring up. It, was, it wasn't It was right were to you, bring up on the air. Were, what were you high on at the time? Uh, alcohol, drugs? Ralph, you know what, dude? I'm, you Ralph, I, I'm trying to be a nice guy here, man. And no, you're really nice going, I, you know, I, you, I mean, come on. Why don't you drop it? Drop it. Nice. Artie's doing him a huge favor here, trying to let him get out, and he just won't take it because he's too stupid. He's. This is when you are digging yourself in a bigger hole. Like, mm -hmm. he is letting you get off the phone and dropping it, but you're trying to prove your innocence, even though you're guilty so bad. Yes. I don't know why people do this. Well, I think, first of all, Ralph's not smart. He's not bright. And the second part is he's um, clearly emotionally imbalanced. Like he's got not to get into analysis here, but his he, he always has that fallback of I'm Howard's girlfriend. So I can say whatever the fuck I want to whoever I want and get away with it. And clearly he's gotten away. You're the one that pointed it out. Why would a fuck up maintain a job? How could a fuck up maintain a job so many years unless he was rimming the fucking boss? Right. 
There's just no way. And it, in all walks of life, guys, the secretary that can't fucking type, she's she types 20 words per per hour and she uh, fucks up the coffee and she, you know, she doesn't double side the copies that she's supposed to and all that shit. Uh, oh, but she gives a fucking Hall of Fame blowjob. So we keep her on. Right. Right. And, you know, for sure. And I think um, I think, too, like some people with egos that even Howard does this, like they just don't even see how bad they sound yes. and how bad it comes off that they just think they can get away with everything. And it sounds fine. Like, yeah. what? Why? Why? Why do I even have to give an ex- explanation for any of this? I, right. could, I could just be able to say whatever the fuck I want. I have to explain myself. What do you mean? Right. On the Patreon, we covered the Lloyd Grove uh, <laughs> confrontation. And it's one of the stupidest, dumbest stories he could ever explain on why things happened the way they happened. And him sounding, trying to sound like a tough guy, but sounding like a complete fagola. And it the longer it goes, and we, Deborah and I commented on this, Artie goes, like, he's not commenting because he knows it's bullshit, and it sounds like bullshit, and he's like, I- I'll just have to let him get through this because it's going to take 45 minutes to get this bullshit story concocted on the air. Yep. And it does. It does literally take, I think it was in, in the end, something like 20 minutes, uh, of a 30 minutes maybe, even longer, and because we really tried to play it out. And it was aimless. It really was going nowhere. You couldn't believe it. He was unconvincing. And Ralph is no more convincing here. Don't be nice. Nope. Be honest. What the fuck? I didn't steal any fucking money. From no, who? because they caught An- you, according to Art. Another declarative affirmation. I didn't steal any fucking money. Okay, so then now we're up to number three. Yep. <laughs> who did I steal money from? You pipe down, Robin. <laughs> Whoever was Robin. playing poker. It was just the four of us. There's another guy who knows about it, too, not just Ross. Who? Oh. The guy who was there the second time. <laughs> oh, who, who was that? The I don't even guy. remember. The second time it wasn't a poker game. It was tips for a waitress at Noble. <gasps> oh. <laughs> what happened? What, happened? what did he do? <laughs> he That's stole a tip. really bad. I stole a tip from Nobu. He lifted money off the table? Now, Artie, you can tell he's he's like, uh, I opened up a can of worms here. But now, you know, his character is being assassinated. So he, he's give, been given no choice by Ralph. I thought the giggle gave it away. See, Ralph yep. didn't say what he giggled. Nope. Yep. So if somebody said that about me, I would be like, are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. I'd be furious. Ralph mm-hmm. laughed. Yeah, he laughed. Well, the way he laughs off anything. When they call him gay, they call him this. He just laughed. That's his mo. And that's like I said, that's some kind of nervous. I think it's a, it's a, to me, it's it's it, it, you're right. It's an admission. It's a confirmation. Yeah, absolutely. This is a weird area. Come on, dude. No, go ahead. Go it's ahead. It's true. Go ahead. Ralph wants to defend himself. No, yeah, seriously. Go ahead, Artie. I don't hey, mind. Uh, maybe honestly, maybe you don't remember, like OJ. Maybe, maybe we're in a like coked up days. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. What happened at Nobu? We were all hanging out after hours at Nobu, and uh, you know Richie let the uh, the restaurant stay open for a few extra hours, and we ate, we drank, and Richie picked up everything, and he said just uh, tip. Okay, guy's gonna let it play through. The waitress. Mm. So we all threw in a bunch of money, and in the in the uh, a bunch of money was a hundred dollar bill, and <laughs> me and Ross and Wayne saw you snatch it. And then and then we confronted you, and you said, "Oh yeah, it was a joke," and you put it back. Ooh. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. So did I? Did <laughs> did I? Wait. Did I? Oh, you have exact details. Shit. That's, did that's I? Did you? I don't even even ever remember being at. When was I at Nobu with you? Oh. Las Vegas Nobu. Uh, okay. Oh, he's got details. And I st- I took money off the table. See, I can't believe that. Yeah, but I mean, I, from but, a but, wait, 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 doesn't let, lie though. Let, 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 let me say something. I've been to Nobu like like fifty times, and I've paid like once. I mean, that's the last place I would. Know, if I was going to take money. <laughs> I, I, that is I would, impressive. I would take money off the table. Yeah, why does he have to steal? He doesn't even. Pay. Yeah, I don't even. Well, you know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> please. I know you're writing furiously. Go ahead. Well, when was that? So he was acknowledging in the beginning 
that they were at Nobu and he seemed to have no problem with that scenario. So Mm -hmm. why wouldn't you say right from the beginning, wait, when were we at Nobu? Yeah. So, I mean, wouldn't if if somebody was putting you in the scenario, wouldn't the first thing you would say, wait, when were we ever at Nobu? But okay, and now all of a sudden it's wait. Uh, when was I? When was I at Nobu? I yeah. mean that that just sounds odd altogether. Yeah. Right. And then I never pay at Nobu. Well, what does that have to do with the situation? <laughs> right. What right. is what is you being a fucking leech and never paying have yeah. to do with you stealing a tip? Well, the other thing is, and let's, it's not the other thing. This is this is connected. It when a story is when you can't make when you can't keep to your own story, then some or all of it is bullshit. And that's that's just something you learn as a kid growing up. Like things sound right. Things don't sound right. What he's saying that's correct is that he's a cheap shit. Yeah, absolutely. But that has no bearing on this particular incident or pair of incidents. And when Wayne Siegel calls in later, which we'll get into that to me is the smoking gun because they call him. He didn't call in. They'd literally ask what happened here. And he's like, this is flat out what happened. This is my recollection. And you put enough witnesses that seem credible. And all of a sudden you're, you know, it's no longer circumstantial. It looks pretty fucking bad. I also think this whole thing of, I don't remember that doesn't play to your strength. Like you not having a memory that doesn't sound very uh, plausible. Like you have a memory about uh, already eating. Yeah. But you ha- but you have a definite memory that you don't steal. And that, that you've you never stolen. That- right. You also have a memory that you don't pay. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm a scumbag in other ways, but not that way. <laughs> and then also it's like, but I never pay. So that that's supposed to color your character saying, oh, that's why I wouldn't steal because I don't pay. That to me actually says, well, I am so poor that I never pay. So maybe I do need the money. So I would steal a tip. You're actually you're absolutely right. It actually makes him him look to be more of a thief or more of a fucking swindler, swind, swindling, chiseling asshole than if he had just kept his mouth shut. If you just said, I don't remember, I don't remember, I was fucked up, boom, no one cares. You're playing in a league bigger than you are in, like you're batting higher than, you know, you're you're playing with millionaires Mm -hmm. and you're a fucking blowjob stylist. So, (laughs) you know, you probably don't want to keep giving blowies and you're just like, listen, I fucking just need some fucking money and these rich assholes, fuck them. Let me so just take a tip. Who who needs a fuck? They don't need all this fucking money. These Nobu whores. I've never known anybody to steal money from a tip table. I have known loads of people, unfortunately, who would use their credit cards to get a discount, pocket everything and use their discount to pocket the difference, which to me is a scumbag, because if you have that discount. You should be saying, hey, guys, I'm able to get points off because of my this card or whatever, or I have a coupon or whatever. Everybody put in less so we can all pay less. And that's the move of a friend. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And one time this person did this to me, and the next time we were all out to dinner, I think Paula remembers it distinctly. Uh, they said, let's put all our money together. And I said, no, uh, so-and-so, I'm gonna, we're going to pay for ourselves. Don't you worry about it. Separate checks. She's like, no, I can get a discount. I go, I know, I'm, I know you can get a fucking discount, yeah. but I, I, I don't want any Chisler. part of your chicanery, fuckhead. So um, anyway, let's continue. Hey, Ralph thought the tip was too too right. extravagant. Hey, we're yes. we're in it's Vegas, like, and you know we're in Vegas, and you know it's, 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 money issues come up in Vegas. That's true. That is true. Believe me, I know that better than anybody. That's really. Uh, that's I think true. Ralph was counting on what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah, I guess you yeah, do. Apparently not. Not on this show. <laughs> apparently hey, not. Um, this is the thing I wanted to ask you. How fucking destitute is your stylist that he has to resort to ripping off C notes from friends? Pretty destitute. And he also has Ralph has this way of always having an add on sarcastically, but it's honest. So he just said, oh, apparently, apparently not. So, he, yeah, he's admitting it. He knows right. under the guise of joking, but it's not a joke. It's just flat out. Yeah, it's just a thing. 
Well, giggle, giggle. This is a stupid thing to bring up, and it's awkward. Why don't we just drop it? <laughs> yeah, well, bring us something else that you want to, like, drop a bomb and then say, oh, no. It's okay. Ralph, you called up to fuck with me, and I was in a shitty mood about this dickhead, and, you know, <laughs> you're, I mean, you're, you're allowed you are, to call well, up well, and be insanely insulting. What, I mean, all you do is you, you call up, you're calling me fat, drug, blah, blah, blah. I'm just supposed to sit there and take that, and, and then I said something else completely joking around. You could have hung up, but you don't want to hang up. Or he Artie. could have said that wasn't true. Artie. Oh, and he's right. Artie's absolutely right here. Yeah, there's nothing I can say to this. It's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Wait a second. You are fat, right? I mean, and I'm you not... are a oh. scumbag thief, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you stepped into that one. Oh. Man, I that's... guess what's tipped in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas. I didn't say you were a fat fucking loser Jersey scumbag. I just said you were fat. Right. Yeah. All right. That, makes, that, he, that, that has not, that has so much to do with the conversation. And he didn't say no. Ralph just no. didn't say no right there. No, he didn't. And he wasn't indignant and he wasn't. He was just literally he nailed. And f- listen to Fred laughing. Like you heard Fred laugh they, they He was in fucking hog heaven watching Ralph get fucking lambasted. So Artie's fat. He's admitting that. And Ralph is silently admitting I'm a scumbag thief. They're both yep. sitting there in their yep. own truth, except yep. for Ralph is such a fucking, he will still roll around in shit and try to yes. weasel his way out of this. And Howard, mm-hmm. with Howard's help, of course. Oh, yes, big time. Did oh, Ralph you, you, break into your hotel room and go through your wallet? Once? <laughs> yeah. Artie, you know, he rifle through your pants. <laughs> I'm really disappointed in you, Artie. That's really bullshit, man. Uh, you, know, you know I didn't steal money off the fucking table in the fucking plane. Who else saw it, Artie? And also, when Ralph, now he as he gets more defensive, it's all F this, F that, F this. And that's also, to me, the mark of someone who's guilty. You're getting, you're using your, emo, you're letting your emotion get the better of you. And you're actually just um, you're making yourself look worse. I'm really disappointed in you. You know I didn't. No, uh, actually... He knows you did. Yeah. I'm disappointed in you that you let the cat out of the bag is what he's really saying. I'm disappointed in you that uh, you told the truth and yep. didn't just let me uh, steamroll over you. Yeah. For my you, for my boss. Oh, yeah. First of all, I'm in a plane. All that. That's that's straight out of the Howard book of befuddlement. God, they're such terrible liars. Yes, and twins. They're like they are like Danny DeVito and Schwarzenegger. They look alike. They like dress alike. They are you know Scott Thorson Liberace argument. And it's so when when they're when they're fumpering, they sound the same. That stutter. Yeah, they, they both turn into stuttering John. Yeah, or <laughs> st- stammering Ralph. Food and everything. I'm having a great time. Why are you steal fucking? Howard, money? you're gonna sit there I and pretend you don't money. remember this conversation. I, I, I remember the whole conversation. I just didn't see this go down. I, I'm, I'm Nobu, being honest. At Nobu, I'm, you know, no, I no, did. no, on the How plane. You no, miss on the plane. I, I did miss it. We, we, you know what? Seriously, you know. Now he listened to him stammering. Now he's. I, I, I did. I did. I was there. My wife, my girl, my 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 daughter does date men successfully. And now Ralph is even coloring the picture more. We, you, you, I, I, I was having a good time. I was doing this. When would I steal the money? Why would yeah. I do that? I was having Why a good time. Why would t- I do so that? So now, now the time that he doesn't remember, all of a sudden now he was having a good time. Right. <laughs> the time that you don't remember that you were having, now it's good. <laughs> Any low rent shyster would have a fucking field. It would be like, it would be like handing a, 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 a like a fifty caliber like a helicopter gun to a firing squad and say, just keep shooting. Just, just have Adam. Jesus Christ. Oh, I did. I said to you, I can't believe what you're telling me. And you said it and Ross said it. And I remember. So and you I remember just, Ross saying it too. Uh, it, listen, ah! it was a long time. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Let me replay that a little bit. Cause I, I we, we just hold on. Howard, you're going to sit there and pretend you don't remember this conversation. I I, I remember the whole conversation. I just didn't see this go down. I'm I'm being honest. At Nobu? No, no, no. no, On the plane. No, on the plane. I I did miss it. You know what? Seriously, you know I did. I said to you, I can't believe what you're telling me. And you said it and Ross said it. And I remember. So you remember Ross saying it, too? Uh... Listen, it was a long time ago, and I, I, I just didn't... I wasn't aware that this was going on, and you... Howard's just as guilty for covering up this shit. 
that turnaround was so flagrantly bad. I don't even how can how can how can somebody just lie? So that was one of the fastest lies ever mm-hmm. he's ever done. And one of the worst. And also, I don't know how you, after hearing that you couldn't in your heart, if you were already or anybody else on the show, like anybody internally not go, OK, if it wasn't made clear to me already from what I've seen, this is absolutely the smoking gun that this guy and this fucking our boss, they're swapping spits, they're swapping fucking semen up the up the culo, whatever, and because there's no one gets treated like this except the boss's girlfriend. Nobody. Why would it, why would he be covering up for a f- scumbag thief? Yes, that, exactly. So now he goes, I remember the whole conversation. Right. You said it. Ross said it. So you remember Ross said it. Uh, it was a long, it was time, a long ago. time ago. What? Yeah. You just right. said you remember the whole thing. I and would it, be I would have lost it. Yeah. Go back a half hour, guys, into the into the broadcast when we did it. And he, he said, look, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, what, oh, yeah. What is complete scumbag? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember that? A completely unsolicited. Just just Ooh. that was Howard. That was Howard first feeding Artie saying, you know, basically trying to egg him on, not realizing he was outing himself for admitting. Oh, yeah, I know that that happened. That was definite. So. There's your turnaround, guys. Fucking fastest. You break your necks on this show. You really do, especially these reshinding episodes. But this is, uh, you know, um, among among the same ilk. You pointed it out to right. me. The, 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 again, it's not my agenda to fuck with Ralph right now. I don't know why I'm arguing with this. It's it's like it's maybe you're angry. Maybe this is the Dana thing. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's make it about something else, uh, Howard, because you can't get out of that fucking corner fast enough. Do you see that? Do you hear that? Yeah. Bingo. Let. let how many times has Dana gotten thrown in the bus anytime Howard's in a pickle? God, that poor girl's body has just been run over so many times. Oh, yeah. And the heroin stuff that that's all going to fucking come into play. Let's just leave it as a misunderstanding. What's the matter with Dana? <laughs> they broke up. Oh, again? <laughs> you were freeloading in L.A. during that. You missed, yeah, you the missed whole it. Thing, yeah. You were at Sam's house freeloading. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Arnie? You don't know? Is that Artie got laid. Over? Uh, Artie got laid by a different girl. And did she break up with him? Oh. Well, like, we broke up before that, but that's sort yeah, of yeah. But Artie put, that, the, put the nail in the ground. Yeah. Now, if you hear if you hear Howard's voice, and like I said, you listen to the show long enough, you pick it up. He is giddy about the opportunity he has now to move the fucking topic elsewhere because he's in a fucking pickle. Oh yeah, he can. He can't get out of this fast enough. He no. The pressure's coming. I yeah. mean, he it's like a blitz. He's like, I got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the explanation point. Who, the was the, uh, who was the girl get laid by? <laughs> I, uh, he's not. Well, I gave her the number to the show. She could call in if she wants. Well, who was she? Did you meet her? Or did... A girl I met over the summer, yeah, at a stand-up gig. But, I mean, I didn't have sex with her over the summer. Karen, you're on the air. Go ahead. So you had her on the back burner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he had a back burner. Everything's but... a food reference. Hey, Karen, you know what, uh, Howard? Yeah. I, I'm going to send a picture put on the website of Artie on the plane in Vegas <laughs> and uh, and we'll see who oh for fuck's sake oh my yeah. god you had an out you yeah. had an out yeah you threw, they could have just let it go another way you threw poor teacher Dana under the bus one more fucking time and you had an out and now you're gonna send a picture of Artie on the thieving plane are yeah. you kidding me mm-hmm. <laughs> was like dizzy with stuffing his face with food. And- Dude, yeah, I, I'm not going to deny you that I drunk. overate. And you were drunk, so let's get that. Definitely drunk, okay. without question. Yeah. So listen, as my job as a producer is always to keep things moving and everything. So I called both of the people that were part of the stories. And I have Wayne Because yes. right. I wanted him to be able to give his All right, side. let Karen first go. Karen, go ahead. Hey, Howard. Hi. What do you want to say? Say it quickly. Yeah, I up. just think that Ralph must have taken the money because he's really uh, seems to be defensive about it. <laughs> okay. And the callers pile in. It's the best. <laughs> All right. That's fair enough. Wayne, what do you remember about this? Were you really involved or? Uh, uh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. What's up, hey, Wayne? All right. Ralphie boy. I love you, Ralph. Mm-hmm. What happened was when we were at the table. At Nobu. Everybody- at Nobu. Yeah, no. yeah, Wayne wasn't on the plane. All right. I wasn't on the plane, but I was at Nobu. Mm-hmm. The money went up on the table, and I put up a, a lot of the money because I was just buying dinner. 
Okay, I'm going to let this play through, guys. Mm-hmm. The check was coming, and I said, wait a minute. Where's the fucking money? We, missed, we can't be short $100. <laughs> I turned to Ralph. I said, Ralph, did you take the fucking money? And I was half laughing, and with a grin, oh, oh, I must have made a mistake, and out came the 100 Whoa. Mm. But Artie just said there was no check. And again, the t- not 79 trying to do whatever he can. First of all, he's stupid. He doesn't understand. Why doesn't he ever understand any concept immediately? Why is that the question? Yeah. Well, I mean, well yeah. Why are, you get, why are you getting hung up on minutia that is not germane to the actual conversation? Like, <laughs> what dinner? <laughs> what were they wearing? <laughs> Jesus oh, why, <Christ>. what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what day was it? <laughs> What artwork was hanging up on the wall? <laughs> Did it have tissue in the in the bathroom, or was it the that rolling towel that keeps going back and forth? No, we were all putting money. Sure. We, we're 100? putting money in a pot for we're putting money in a pot, right? To to pay for okay. whatever, right. no, right. To pay either for a tip or whatever. Yeah, Richie might have given us a major discount. Right, right. There was, but there was money that was due. We decided we was were it going like to a pay. bucket of money. It was like a pot of money. Like a oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I thought you were handing it out. No, 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 no. no. There was just money on the table. Oh, okay. So first of all, when Wayne told the story, Ralph just did that. He did that. Uh, so mm-hmm. that wasn't a denial. So, right. okay. That's an admission. Mm-hmm. And now making kind a of joke a about, groan. and then making a joke about, oh, I just took it out of the, uh, I thought it was, you know, a free for all. Yeah. Because people just t- give money away yeah, to course. leeches who don't to pay hom- for dinner in the first place. To homeless bridge and tunnel uh, stylists, yeah. Going to give. Richie was, either there wasn't a check, whatever it was, because I remember there was a discussion about Richie picking up the tab, and we thought that was ridiculous, but we appreciated it. But we were putting money on the table anyway. Right. And in putting the money on the table, I put. I know I had put... Um, uh, a lot of money on the table because the, we knew the bill was going to be big. Right. And then I said, wait a minute. We I started counting. Yeah, time had passed. We started counting the money and Wayne, right. we're, all, we're clearly down $100. Okay, so you got two people confirming essentially that this this happened. Okay, and you get, now you, the one thing I, I'm, I'm really pissed about this whole exchange and on the second time it happens about, I don't know, months later when uh, Ralph brings it up on the wrap-up show and then they discuss it on the air and they just go through the whole thing again, but it's not as interesting. They don't get uh, Ross, Ross is, uh, um, they don't call, they, he doesn't call in. And I know. that would have been really like the, the trifecta of Ralph's a fucking thief. And I wonder why. And I wonder if it's because Ross knows, or I think it's because Ross maybe is like a cokehead or does some like shady shit with Ralph mm-hmm. and he worries about or cheats on his wife or something and Ralph yeah. knows some shit. And oh, yeah. he's just like, listen, I don't need this shit coming out about my life that Ralph yeah. knows about. So I'm just I'm not I'm out on this one. <laughs> I think you're 100 percent. He wouldn't know that about Wayne, but he wouldn't know, he would know stuff about Ross because Ross is a, a dirtbag. And in fact, it was uh, the scuttle that was that he fucked around with Bubba's wife, Heather. And, yeah. and he was married at the time. And and Ross, I, I don't care what anybody says. He does look and sound like that scumbag, like that frat boy asshole that just never grew up. And the, the person you fucking hate at a party, you just hate him. He just looks so obnoxious. He looks yeah. like an obnoxious douche that like. Meathead. Just, yeah. Like really obnoxious. Like that, Loud. the guy that's, the, the guy's going to actually spill everybody's drinks on them like literally just go around grab you by the the shoulders and make you fucking pour your drink on yourself that kind of shit that kind of shit yeah, sweaty smelly how whiskey. are you how are you <laughs> and then like you know probably like has remnants of like coke on his nostrils and is like right. you know trying to ply girls with like cosmos and bumps and just a fucking <laughs> shitty asshole he just looks terrible <laughs> He does. He look. Yeah, he looks like a bender. He looks like a like a, your own portable bender, uh, just unfolded and unleash unleash hell in a bar. If like if you remember in Bugs Bunny, the Tasmanian Devil that was spin around, <laughs> and yeah, crashed through walls and yes. boulders and shit. That's exactly. Or when the when Wiley Coyote takes those fucking Roadrunner pills and he starts sawing through whole boulders and shit. <laughs> yes, but he does. He looks exactly like. The Tasmanian devil. That's the perfect ah, analogy. Ah. <laughs> and that's probably his level of conversation <laughs> when it happens. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> I don't know any defenders of Ross. That's all I'll say, guys. Right. And I said, wait a minute. That can't fucking be. Where's the money? What you, wait, 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 wait. What were you counting? I'm they were honest. counting because they, money. they calculated a tip, a certain amount, uh, and it was short. And it disappeared. So you're saying I didn't put money in and I took money out? I remember saying, where's the money? And I looked over at you and I said, Ralph, did you take the hundred dollars? Kidding around. Kidding around. And you had a grin and pulled out the hundred dollars and put it on the table. Yeah, busted. Boom. Boom. Is there any, do we need, we need an imaginary gavel. Maybe actually I'll, I'll add it in post-production. Just really remind me. Hold on for a sec. Okingly and put it in. Or you, or I was putting it in my pocket and trying to all, run out with it. All, all I wanted. Wait, 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 wait. Let yeah. me ask you a question. Who jokes stop like the, that? Wait, stop the bullshit. It's a good one. Because uh, I don't really remember this, and it's possible okay. as a joke. A like joke. You had money was, on the table, and I took a joke. A, what if they hadn't caught you in yeah, on the joke? Yeah, where were you no, going to no, spring no. this? Now listen to Howard, kind of like stirring the shit again, even though he was really a, eager to fucking end it. Like to get it off somewhere else. Now Ralph's just stuck his foot back in the bear trap, and he's he's now he's flipping back over Howard. I know he's doing this. I don't know why. Involuntary. He, and he knows where this is. And the funny thing is, is they both know what happened. So it's like, why, if you know you're guilty, and you know he's guilty, are you pretending? To not know where this is going to end up? Mm -hmm. Or why are you... If you know something's hot, why do you keep putting your hand on it? Maybe it's the... Maybe it, uh, underneath it all is, I'm the boss. Nothing's really going to happen to him anyway. So let's just have fun with this. And he's realized that now after the fact, after initially being called into question about it, that he realized, you know, oh, I forgot. I'm the boss. I can tell everybody to do to fuck off and they'll have to. You're right. Maybe it's maybe it's almost like, you know what? They realize we're caught. Let's see, knowing that we're caught, how much we can get away with. Yep. How far we can fuck with them. Yep. Yep. How far we can twist this and let them fucking let's twist in the wind and mm -hmm. see how far we can bullshit. Yep, I think that's exactly it. And, I, and now it, I didn't it didn't occur to me after till after the fact. I just thought Howard was stupid and got. He got when when confronted on the spot. Do you remember that clip I played of uh, the guy calling in and said, uh, "When did you you know did you ever have sex with uh, Robin Gibbons?" And he goes, "I I I I I don't know, I don't know." And the guy yeah. goes, "Oh, you how do you not know?" And he goes, "Oh no no wait wait hold hold on hold on uh, oh I forgot, he had a brain fart in that moment and it, he didn't realize he was explaining. No, I never did. Of course not. She's a beard, right." Right. And, and this is an example of that. Like he should have wisely kept his distance away from the start and let Ralph deal with it. And then if he gets in too deep, we'll pull him out. We'll end the bit or we'll go to commercial something. You know what I mean? Right. And now since we've been doing this for so long, just like you said, I haven't heard it like this in this way until now that they realized they fucked up. So now they're just, you know what? We're caught. Let's mm -hmm. just twist. Yep. Who cares? Yeah, nothing's going to come of it anyway. So we just and it'll maybe it'll make for great radio. But in the moment, Howard was at suddenly scared because he realized, oh, God, I'm stuck now here for a little bit. And then he remembered, oh, I it's like Superman forgetting he can fly and then dropping out of the sky and suddenly remembering he can fly. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, he's just another superhero analogy. Joke. Surprise. <laughs> I, no, no, stop it. <laughs> You're a regular Wayne, Wayne, young man. Wayne, li yeah. listen, it's possible that I did it as a joke. I don't remember this incident, allegedly. They didn't see. Uh, what <laughs> I don't the remember. hell kind of he sentence did, he, he, is that? He, 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 I don't remember this. I, what I allegedly don't remember this is an incident. Or he, well, he meant to say, I don't remember this alleged incident. But he's in too much of a fucking, he's a 78. He said, I may have did this as a joke <laughs> i may have did this as a joke allegedly <laughs> i <Okay>. don't recall <laughs> you take the money robin shut up <laughs> if was it what did you catch are you saying you caught me stealing a hundred dollars a 
hundred dollars. I'm gonna fucking steal a hundred dollars off the table. Ralph. Oh, he can barely even say it. Right, because he he took he, in the same breath. He tried to say too much and got choked up. But he also now you're repeating yourself. You're repeating a concept that does nothing for your case. When he's guilty, he. I didn't steal. I didn't steal. One hundred dollars. One hundred dollars. One hundred dollars. The more you're saying it, guilty, <laughs> guilty, guilty. Oh my I, god. I've never heard. I've never heard such an awful, awful defense in my life in anything. And I've seen a lot of court. I've read a lot of court transcripts. I've seen a lot of those CCTV videos. You know, in the courthouse, not CCTV, but the uh, interrogation videos and stuff. It's it's astounding. You know, like a Chinese finger trap when you pull and it keeps getting tighter and tighter. Yeah. Ralph is just every time he repeats, repeats, it's that's the pulling. Yeah. You, you repeat your pulling. You're making it mm -hmm. worse. You're getting mm -hmm. stuck harder and harder in your lies. Yep. And it just look at making them look that much worse. It was a bunch of friends sitting at a table. And there was no way that anybody, including me, was going to accuse friends of taking money. Wayne, so Wayne, what I do, Wayne do you think I'm going to steal fucking money off the table for a tip of a free meal? No. So, so, so why are you saying that? Ralph, okay, you got on the air I, finally after five years. Good job. Ralph, I'm not looking to get on the air. Yes, you are. Ralph, Wayne runs a very it. huge car. Uh, Ralph, yeah. Let's reverse it for a second. And they Ralph, called him. Robin's exactly right. They called him. They asked for his opinion. He didn't bother getting on the air. It was like, oh, okay, I'll tell you what my side of the story is. And that's always Ralph's. What he does is uh, character assassinate. When he's trapped, it's always. Yeah. Like a rat. You you drug addict. You fat. You're, oh, he's R Ross. Who trusts Ross? Yeah. And is more of that on the wrap up show. And actually it gets even one of the a couple of the callers get right on him. And and it's, you know, and one of them was very logical and practical. said, look, this let's not make this a joke. You, why don't you just fess up and say and, and you know, you should never happen between friends. So the, the other thing he keeps doing is he mm -hmm. keeps saying, do you think I'd steal? Do you think I'd do this? He keeps saying that. Yeah. As as if. As if that's somehow going to negate all these facts, right? In yeah, this it's emotional my, outburst. Right, right. My 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 guilt is contingent on your um, character presumed character assassination of myself, and I'm counting on you to not be as much of an asshole as I am and let me off the hook. That's exactly right. So he knows he knows that these people are decent enough to not just say yes. Right. So. Because that is such a that's such a terrible thing to say. Yes, I think you did do this. <laughs> exactly. And they know that he won't they he knows that they won't say that. So he keeps pushing that question out there. Until Artie decides, fuck you, I am gonna say it and I'm pissed off enough to say it. And that's what happens when you when you people when you corner people like that, that's exactly what happens. Ralph, what? would you and, the, and, now, and, and now Wayne's going to do a brilliant thing, and he's going to put it up in a hypothetical situation for Ralph. For a second, say, you didn't take the money. Are you telling me that as a magnanimous gesture to get out of the restaurant, you took $100 out of your pocket to say, oh, okay, I'll just put it in so we could leave? Is that that's the more likely happened, scenario. Yeah, that's true. That, that's never happened. <clears throat> oh, wait, 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 wait. Rob waits to see what happens. <laughs> if we're putting in money and we get a free meal or something like, or whatever, I, I, I don't, I don't fuck. I'm not, I'm not stingy. If we, we, we're paying, we're paying. We take a lie to Lies in the face of what he said before when he said, "I never pay." Yep. So that completely is a lie because. It, that's a turnaround. You just said, I never pay for meals. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I would tip because I never pay. So now he's saying, I'm not stingy. <laughs> yes, you are. You just said you don't pay. One of my favorite Artie lines was uh, he said he was out with uh, Howard, Gary, Ralph, 
and it was himself, the four of them at this place. And he goes, the funny part of the bill is, uh, you know, H- Howard makes a move. Gary makes a move. I make a move. Ralph is like a wax figure when the bill comes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he is. It's so there's Madame Tussauds. <laughs> yeah. There's a history of him being a cheap shit, being a fucking freeloading asshole. So already his character is ass- There's no character to assassinate, in my opinion. But, you know, this just gets where, you know, all of a sudden, instead of zero, it's negative. Now, all of a sudden, it's, you know, his character is that much worse. And it's a perfect scenario because nobody, no listener and nobody in that room could ever picture that scenario. And it never happened where Mm -hmm. Ralph made a magnanimous gesture at the end of a dinner and pulled out any sort of compensation. (laughs) No. In fact, he's celebrated on the show as being this dirt bag. And uh, God, if I had to fucking pull those clips together and make a Ralph episode where we just shit on him, guys, you guys, we'd be we'd have, we'd be here all day recording. So, Doctor, if any, this. if anything, That's think about that. the time. Think about the time when they were in uh, uh, the, the Hamptons. Hamptons. Yeah, yeah, and they literally, he had to. He was basically drunk on a dance floor with some old senior. <laughs> Yeah, like some rest home <laughs> camp tonight. And With Sylvia to, Miles or some shit, I don't know. Like some yeah. really ancient, yeah. And they had to give him $300, $400 just to leave him there. So, and then he complained because no. he he got into a car with a guy who drove him around. And he's like, I don't remember where it is. I couldn't. Now, all night they were driving around looking for Howard's place because he didn't know where the fuck it was. Because he never actually has to drive anywhere. He's always driven. Oh my God, that's worth going over. <laughs> I think we might we might just have to. <laughs> Let's continue. Absolutely. Right. I'm not too good at those though. <laughs> I feel miserably. He's caught in the last one. You're a big homo. Yeah. 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 What that Tory and I don't know if they're accurate on any level. Um, so that's the best. Are you stealing money off the table at Nobu? <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Wayne, thank you. You're welcome. And Ralph, thank you. Yeah, I, I, All right. Listen, again, if you want it, Ross is, Ross is a nice guy, and uh, he probably won't say anything to confirm it. And I wish I hadn't, to tell you the truth, because it's, it's nobody's business. Well, yeah, 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 Artie, add that to the list of things you wish you hadn't said on the air. Well, you were trying to, you were pushing Artie's buttons. Why? But why Ralph, would you, you guys... were being vicious. You want to go back and listen to the shit you were saying to me. And then we started just insulting each other in a joking way, and then I thought it ended, and then you Fucking picked it up again. Okay, and let it run through, guys. We had extra innings of you, uh, <laughs> and, got- and, and look, accusing me of very real, hurtful things about drugs and everything else. And uh, you know what? Some came out of my mouth that shouldn't have. But and but Ralph, why you have said you guys some been things. Covering up for a thief. <laughs> Ralph, you said some things. Well, he's a friend. You know what? I mean, it's an embarrassing thing. It's. A, I mean, the guy's forty-eight years old. He's stealing hundred dollar bills. <laughs> 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 You know what else is funny is Benji chuckling. Which, oh, yeah. When you know that you hear that little giggle in the back. Yeah. Fuck, everyone knows it's true. Yeah, I think so. Funny. I, funny you did say day. things. Seriously, I give a shit. You know, whatever you say, nobody, nobody, nobody's going to listen to you. You're like a fucking degenerate gambler, drug addict. <gasps> I told him. Now, so, I mean, look, okay, no one's going to win. What if I stand up in court? More people are going to believe me than you. Well, if you were in Fuck no. No. I would say that's very damaging, I have to say, Ralph. Yeah, well, let, let's ask the question. If you. Okay, so. Now, so now, yeah, we, we he's come full circle. He, now he knows like nothing's going to eventually happen. So fuck it, we'll just have fun with this. Wiggy does. So you know, now now let's get the callers in, and now he can pile on, knowing that Ralph has his full protection and no, there's no ramifications. And it, just the gall, just to say, oh, you loser, drug addict, degenerate. If we were to stand up in court, oh, you fuck you. And he, again, he has the he has the. He could have just backed out of this. Already nope. keeps saying it should have been brought up. I'm sorry we brought it up. Could have been it ended a thousand times. Yes. But he presses forward and insults him again. So, right. but he does it like we said. And now I'm hearing this differently. He does it on purpose because he knows, well, I did it and I don't give a fuck. Mm hmm. You've got Ralph telling a story and Artie hey, telling Robert, the other the side of the story. <laughs> Who do you believe? Who do you believe? Oh, boy. I believe we got to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> that was not that you know you know that was not, that was meant to be a joke and the timing was perfect but it's not really uh, yeah he yeah. well mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> thanks uh-huh. boys uh-huh. <laughs> all right ralphie thank you thank you thank you Art. hey artie what, Ralph? Can I borrow a couple bucks? Yeah, whatever you need. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you, man. He's I practically you, married man. to Sam I Simon. You. I wouldn't be fucking with Ralph. He's yeah, got man. major bankroll behind him. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. somebody's yeah, jealous. Right. Someone, yeah, someone's a little catty. Back here. Yeah. yeah. Do you think um, Howard wasn't paying him enough? And he, so he had to get a second boyfriend, sugar, stylist sugar daddy. job. Yeah, so... You oh yeah, we, set- this one is going to be a whole other episode uh, as soon as I get all the clips together, and there's there's no shortage of them. Uh, I think between him, Stamos, and Sam Simon, they all kind of financed his lifestyle in a way of it may not have even been money. In the other two cases, it was strictly everything's on the arm. You come with me, you fucking suck my dick all weekend, and let me you know stick it up you, and then I'll pay for this first class ticket. You won't put your hands in your pocket except you know to pull out your fucking testicles and so with Howard, he's employed absolutely, but he can keep a secret because that's the you know the the underbelly that's the whole you know the pink mafia type thing oh it's a secret society we swing we're bi we're this we're that or we're gay outright doesn't matter he's like scotty bowers there's a guy famous hollywood book about a guy that was a procurer of of women men and he himself would fuck men and women for you know for enjoyment and he was like he was a pimp he was a hollywood pimp the i think the book's called full service guys and it's a phenomenal read yeah i just remember that time where Howard was upset. He was on vacation with Sam Simon and he called him a couple times on the show. And and it was almost like a jealous. It was like a jealous lover calling him back. Like he was pissed that Ralph packed his packed something wrong. And he was like, well, when are you coming back? And it was it was sounded like a jealous lover. Absolutely. And the tell was he, he outright asked Sam Simon, who was on the phone. Why do you invite Ralph over there? And he start and Simon Sam Simon giggled before he answered. The giggle was, you know exactly why he's there, and I know why he's there, and I also know why he's your stylist. And I also know you're jealous. Yeah, that's exactly it. And Sam Simon, I mean, give you know whatever you think about that guy. Um, he clearly had enough bank to to have things done for him, and Wig couldn't be you know, and maybe in some ways. There were similar people in that in that you know they couldn't be out, they couldn't be out, and they can't be out. Um, and I don't know that there's no evidence, by the way, that Sam Simon's been gay or outed or anything anywhere online. If you want to look up the research, the fucking internet, you won't find shit. I've tried. Someone else, maybe better than me, can find somewhere on Data Lounge or some shit. Go ahead. I, I welcome any intel. We got to go over that whole scenario though, and we will because I just remember. During that phone call, um, Howard sounding super jealous and irritated and wanting Ralph to come back and Ralph just not having any interest in coming back and being super jealous of what they were doing on vacation, interested in it all in an obsessive, weird way. And even Robin at one point was kind of like, why are you mad and you could tell he was bothered throughout the whole show about it because he kept bringing it back up oh yes and the other thing was it was because like what are you telling sam but you know under the under the covers what are you telling him about me yes like you knew he it was totally bugging him it was freaking him out so you believe i'm sure as i do ralph somewhere somehow has compromat and that anytime he wants, if like he's got like Howard can't he can't blackmail Howard, but he can kind of guarantee that, look, treat me with a certain amount of respect. Otherwise, this will hit the fucking papers. It's, oh, un, it's, un, sure. it's, un, it's unsaid. It's unwritten. But that's the understanding. I definitely think so. And I think if Sam Simon didn't die, it would have been a totally different situation. I think maybe it would have blown up before or something could have possibly happened where, you know, maybe 
I, I, maybe the situation would be different than it is now. I'm not yeah. entirely sure because I think yeah. that Ralph was happier with Sam Simon. Oh, I'd say so, especially because you're going out to California all the time. Who who the fuck wouldn't? The weather alone, going in the winter, going to fucking California, going to L.A. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, amazing. Well, uh, I mean, a lot of people want to talk about this, but I'll put them through real quick. Paul, go ahead real quick. Hey, how are you doing? Hey. Nice talking to you. We've been listening for a while. Listen, uh, you know, it's so obvious Ralph is bullshitting. Yeah. I mean, he obviously took the Well, here's the jury. Like that. <laughs> Who jokes like that? Right. All right, and there you know. go. Here's the jury. Uh, let's go to Peter. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, that was great, Paul. Good, yeah, Peter. Nice, nice words. Okay, so here comes Peter. Howard, yep. eloquent. Yes, Howard. Pete. Yes, Pete. Okay. I've been a trial lawyer for 20 years, and uh, Ralph is the most unconvincing witness Crook. confronted with a crime I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. First, when Artie tells him about the poker thing, he calls Artie fat and drunk. Artie admits <laughs> that he's fat and drunk. Exactly. Then, Thank you, sir. <laughs> then when he's confronted with the Nobu thing, he says, oh, I was never at Nobu. But when Wayne Siegel confronts him he goes oh it was just a joke so his story's changed so ralph <laughs> you're ever charged with this don't take the stand on your own defense you're well, horrible no. <laughs> <laughs> thank you whether that guy's a lawyer or not he's on point god that's funny is uh, peter I'll a trial I'll attorney a douchebag shyster like you oh <laughs> boy exactly. oh, you're really a douchebag shyster, but you haven't really uh, defended yourself. And I bet if you went to your house, there's all sorts of items from Sam Simon's school house. And Howard, I would watch out when he's in your house. You got a point. I, I usually leave him in there alone. Now I got to look at. Now I got to look over my shoulder. I got to put a camera on him. You know that. Uh, you know that Absolutely. chair. You know that chair you got that you couldn't find. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. You got it. <laughs> okay, like uh, man, it's it's just there's so much. Um, like dirt, like in this clip, there's just so much, uh, uh, such it's such a fucking cross section of what this show was. Who loses a chair? <laughs> I guess if you've got his eyesight, maybe a chair, maybe it's in the pool with Bianca. It's a little weird. Yeah. I got a feeling a few weeks from now, I was going to be a Polish stripper from scores going, you won an Emmy? <laughs> right. <laughs> Sam's got 13 of them. Bong, bong hit Eric. Yeah, he won't miss one. Of them. I worked on the kitchen. Just bong hit. Hey now. Hey now. Radio gold, man. That was no shtick. I mean, that, the way that whole thing unfolded, it was fucking unbelievable. <laughs> I got to say, it's uh, you pretty. You just learn a new thing every day, don't well, you? Let's go to Nick. Nick, you're on in Detroit. Yeah, I think Ralph's a big asshole. He just stinges <laughs> off everyone. <laughs> When's the last time you saw you heard three callers back to back to back? <sighs> When's the last time? Yeah, three real callers. Uh, I don't know. Real call. <laughs> When's the last time you heard real caller single? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. Oh boy, Ralphie, this does not look good for you. Billy, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, don't go to the jury. Put him through, Howard. Howard. Put him through. Go ahead, Billy. That Howard. I'm convinced that you have two whack packs. The second one is on your show. <laughs> <laughs> Man, and fucking Ralph, every, that, w w it, I never heard a guy call up. He must be a designated caller. He calls up and just tells people how to do their how to do their show, like fucking Gary and shit. Yeah. I'm going, who the hell is this guy? What do you do for a living? <laughs> <laughs> Don't steal Gary's line, Ralph. Jesus, uh, <laughs> you must power through for a living. I'll tell you, you your an, fucking I'm job a, too. I'm gonna probably do it wrong. Ralph is a professional radio critic. But listen, no, Ralph. Oh, yeah, Ralph definitely gets a reaction on the air, and you know we think he's entertaining, but he does call up and systematically. Yeah. Part of his shtick is giving everybody shit, right. and thank you. He stepped on a landmine. Let's go to Joe. Joe, you're on the air. There are landmines in the studio. <laughs> okay, now here we hear from Joe. You're real entertaining, Artie, with your fat fucking belly. Ooh. Oh, see, you fucking, you fucking fuck. You just. Guilty. Like if, I should, uh, if he doesn't have Howard's protection, how how often do you think he would have just gotten pummeled? Oh God! If he didn't have Howard's protection, I mean, come on, he'd it's be just an ink the, spot somewhere. Uh, Artie would have just yoked him up a long time ago. Oh, he would have been Teddy. Yeah, <laughs> she would have been Teddy, but underground. You know, I'm, I'm an entertainer. That's how I make a living. I'm in several unions and in the cage. Yeah. Joe, you're on the air. It cost Tina Fey $1,500 to be in your crappy movie. Great. Thanks. Wow. What? Joe. Wow. Hmm? Hey. 
That works. Yeah, I'm not going to defend my movie. <laughs> <laughs> Got you there. Huh? <laughs> Already at least getting a little levity, adding a little levity to it. Uh, so he's going after it every fucking angle, just like Howard. Howard would do the exact same thing. The MO is just go after everything you think is going to bother them. Well, at least Artie's in movies or whatever on the radio yeah. or doing stand-up. What it, how many styling jobs does Ralph have from his big clientele? Oh, you pu- how many tech vests are you putting on other people, you fuck? Yeah, shaving Howard's taint gets you a lot of other gigs in the industry. <laughs> Joe, go yeah. ahead. I love that. Would- yes. Hey, uh, it doesn't even sound like I'm on the air here. You're on the air, You Joe. are stupid. Hey, fuck you, Ralph. Hey, hey listen, listen, I've been listening since 1986, and ever since Ralph got on this show, yeah. I hated him. I hated him. And uh, I'm not even making a joke here. Right. About since, since you got on Sirius, right. I actually started liking you, listening to the after show. Mm-hmm. Today, you just blew it. I mean, I oh, oh, hate I'm so you. sorry you don't I, like me anymore, I hate you, bag. you piece of shit. You're a- <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. It's it's just just Right. And you're stealing a hundred fucking dollars? Yeah. You piece of shit. It's actually too much. And it's fucking like convincing. You fucking retard. It's so convincing. I mean, you're so fucking bad at lying. I mean, all you're doing is shooting at, at Artie about how fat he is. You're fucking, you, you are the fucking disgrace to that show. You should be, you all should right, be there's fucking a, take it off. There's I, another opinion from the jury. Let's go to... I, I just miss the real caller so bad. Like, listen to these manly men, these <laughs> New Yorkers, these just amazing human beings calling There's, in, these just foul mouthed, awesome one my, people. One of my favorites was after he attacked Sal, and the one guy from Jersey calls in. He goes, He goes, uh, This is one of the best clips I've ever, this is one of the best shows I've ever heard. He said, Artie's Artie's doing what Jersey guys do. Violence was the right response. (laughs) He goes, it's one of the best callers ever. He goes, this is what Jersey guys do. Uh, He goes, uh, Howard, now I understand why you get the money you do. This is brilliant. (laughs) It is. Yeah. This is brilliant. I mean, yeah. I, I just missed the real callers, just one oh, after that. another. We, yeah. Why did he? And now all you get is uh, we, we have. We have great feedback. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we hear we it? have some we have some fucking some fake back office caller from yeah. Minnesota mom, yeah. some wine mom from Minnesota from the back office. Like what? Right. Now, here's fake Arnold Schwarzenegger talking to fake Joan Rivers uh, while talking to fake Mitch McConnell, uh, all voiced by Chris Wilding <laughs> in a pre-recorded call. Here, here's some fake, fake girl from the back office unsatisfied with her boyfriend. Yeah, exactly. What? Ugh. Hey, Howard. I'm really hey, going to be bummed out you know, all day. It's bad enough that this guy leeches off of everybody. Mm. But actually, I mean, I think this guy was stealing money. To actually <laughs> steal from you, right in front of you. But I'll tell you what was impressive was how he was trying to uh, manipulate the conversation, you know, with what's-his-face, uh, you know, who was like, Wayne. 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 Yeah. yeah. You know, he was trying to pull his bitch magic and fucking, you know. Bitch yeah. magic. I love that. Wheels, you're on. <laughs> Hey, Howard. Ah. Okay, one sec. You know, you get so used to hanging around with the guys, throwing money around all the time. They don't expect you to pay anything. You know, he, who knows how many times it could have happened. He's like the kid who learns how to steal out of the fucking, when they pass the basket at church and you pretend to put money in, you take it out. Yeah, yeah. That's Ralphie. Oh, I can't boy. believe it. Don't let him off this one. That's you know what, uh, Wheels, I was feeling sorry for you because Artie's... I, I uh, feel sorry for you, man. Listen, Artie's like taking the... Like Artie's... Uh, oh, Artie told me to fuck off yesterday. Who cares about Artie and me? It's about you, man. You're wrong, dude. I'm you wrong in what? Steal. I'm not you stealing steal. money, please. You stole. I got a hundred dollars. <laughs> Thank you, Wheels. That was a good one. <laughs> Very a th- great, great um, analogy. Yeah, absolutely. And this, so Joey Boots is going to call in and then one more guy, I think, guys. And then we're going to um, actually wrap it up. Dollars, like, he, like I'm going to be bothered with a hundred fucking dollars. What's that going to do? It's chump me? change to a Ralph. <laughs> He's used to <laughs> bleaching much more He's than that. He's used to <laughs> champagne <laughs> and caviar. <laughs> hey, Wheels. Yeah, I'm in a wheel. Fucking roll out of there, douchebag. Oh, boy. Oh, hey, Wills, did you get my message last night? I'm sorry. I uh, there, okay, let's go to Nancy. Here's I have his right number. Go ahead, Nancy. Yeah, Ralph, what a freeloader loser he is. Get a real job. All right. Let's Why would I want to do that? Exactly. <laughs> Joey Booth. What fun is that? 
<laughs> you fucking cunt. Hey, Joey. Oh, my God. Yes. Next, Joey. next yeah. up, who's up next? <laughs> it's a cavalcade of calls. Ooh, this is great. <laughs> it is. Joey, go ahead. Go, Joey. Set him would. up so you can knock him Quickly, down. Quickly, Joey. I would. Yes. Oh, Joey Boots, I like him. Quick up, my brother, man. He, Ralph, I think you're so right on. You speak the truth. All these other people are so scared to speak the truth. I love you, man. And, you know, I don't think you tried to rip off that money off that table. All I right. The jury is no. turning. There's one vote for Ralph. You know, what? Uh, Joey no, is a very is intelligent guy. Joey is intelligent. Joey is true people on the show. He, like, he can be friends with you, but he'll still talk against you. <laughs> That's called a scumbag. <laughs> um, Joey Boots, by the way, let's remember, everyone, he was yeah. on opioids and yeah. died from that. Yeah. So. And yet, yet another uh, whack packer who was gay. Uh, funny, funny how they seem to gravitate towards the show. Yeah, so yeah. take oh, that one. opinion with a grain of salt. Exactly. <laughs> now we're going to be here all day because of jury. Joey. Thank Joey you. is like the Lee J. Cobb in 12 Angry Mouse. <laughs> it is. All right, thank you. All right, brother. All right, all right, all right Randy, go ahead real quick, and then one more call. And Ralph, with a full a safety blitz going An hour and a half. I have not taken a break. Spread the word about Sirius. We do not take commercial breaks that often. Let's go ahead to Randy. As opposed to now, I love that. I have that drop somewhere. We don't take commercial breaks that often. He starts the show with a five-minute commercial break. Jesus, there's so many now. Oh, all big time. Go, so Randy. Uh, yeah. Come on, come on. We got we to gotta move quick. Quickly, Randy. You want to weigh in on this or not? Well, I, uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, is Ralph going to be in charge when the plane crashes? Huh? Oh, that's oh, good. Really, oh, thanks. Great. Let's Next go call. to uh, Mark. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Artie, let me ask you a question, Artie. Go ahead. If you were at, if you were at the table with all your friends, and, and Ralph wasn't even part of Howard's regime, he would have got fucking cracked at the fucking table. Tell me you Marty. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's exactly right. It's yeah, totally. exactly right. Well, me and me, yeah, me and Carrie said, so Carrie and I, sorry, me and Carrie. Now I sound like a fucking dumbski, dunsky. Um, Carrie and I were discussing the same thing. We've never had that situation where we were playing poker and someone tried to short the pot or whatever, or, you know, bet with money they didn't have and then try to get the fuck out of it. But if you did, like, there's certain, the, the guy code amongst guys, you just do not do shit like that. And I've known that since forever. And I'm not even a huge, like, poker player or whatever. Just know that. You know, you lose. You, if you lose, you lose. And if you're out of money, you might have to borrow some. It's it's not the best situation in the world, but sometimes you gotta, you know, be that. You know, you gotta be that way. Listen, I've lost big bets before in football betting. It's it's not fun. No, but you gotta you gotta man up and just like say I lost. I, I bet I lost. I bet I won. Wonderful. Sometimes you gotta take the lows with the highs. I, and, and I get. Amongst other people in a different situation, absolutely. Ooh, what table, stupid? At the, uh, what the no book. Either homo? table. Oh, I mean, you, you, you fucking douchebag. Smacked right up, you fucking piece what? of shit. You, 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 you white trash fuck. You, you. Go, go, go back yeah, to the French you. fryer. The fries are ready, douchebag. Yeah, okay, Ralph. Okay, man, man, man. go fuck yourself, you dick. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when Ralph when Ralph fights with super macho straight guys, it's just oh, yeah. so much more obvious. <laughs> oh yeah, big time. Oh, oh, Kingpin, wow. you're you got the last word. Oh Kingpin. I like him. Yeah. How you doing, Ralph? I love you, man. What's up? Uh you fucking bone smuggler. <laughs> 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 And the problem is, I have no way of proving this happened, so what the fuck are you going to do? You know, but Joey Boots called up and said, I am Steven fucking bastard. We should take you out in the fucking back of the <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's I think that's the perfect one to end on. And uh, guys, we hope I hope you've enjoyed this one. Sam, any closing thoughts? You fucking bone smuggler. <laughs> that's a hate crime these days. I haven't read. <laughs> well, there's so many butt pirate, you know, friend of Dorothy, light in the loafers. <sighs> <laughs> oh fuck! We stop it. We're gonna be in trouble. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about what? Ralph, though. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's it's you know it's, it has the little bit of truth that gives it the force, that extra oomph. Anyway, guys, I didn't we, steal. I didn't steal. Right, <laughs> guys. We hope I'd you've enjoyed steal? this one. <laughs> Am I that kind of person? 
<laughs> um, anyway, guys, we hope you've enjoyed this one. Sam, any closing thoughts? Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed the Ralph Bash, guys. We love you. We're not sure where this is, when this is going to air exactly, but make sure you tune into the Patreon companion that Carrie and I have done, and I'll be posting that the same week on Patreon. So enjoy yourselves. We love you. We love you. Bye. Pasta, 